Hello and welcome to Ruben Uncut. Today's topic, Universe 25, and some of the misunderstandings that have arisen from this interesting experiment. Now, for those not familiar with uh, the Universe 25 experiment, the experiment was essentially designed to be a, a rat utopia. Universe 25 was a rodent-based experiment wherein mice would be housed in a unique structure designed for them where all of their needs would be met, be it food, water, etc. Initially, the population of this enclosed rat city escalated to, a, to up to 2,200 mice. And yes, I have been using the words mice and rats interchangeably. Not totally on purpose, but uh, then again, I keep finding conflicting results of whether or not it was mice or rats. This picture looks like mice. I'm just going to say it. This picture looks like mice. I just don't look big enough to be rats. But the point is, is that Universe 25 is a sociological experiment on animals that has quite a reputation and is often cited as a reason why socialism wouldn't work, which is an interesting take. And one of the myths of the experiment I'm going to be tackling today. So what was Universe 25? Well, like I said, it was essentially a giant mouse city where all of their needs were taken care of. And it, at its height, had over 2,200 mice in it. But by the end of the experiment, it had, the population had, de had declined to just 122 mice left. Now, there are a lot of things, a lot of takeaways that have been made from this experiment as to why the mouse society broke down. So let's address the first myth of what happened here. A lot of people like to, myth number one, socialism it, is doomed. Ultimately, Universe 25 does not actually have anything to do with social, a socialist utopia, because a socialist utopia, I don't know if that's even a thing. I mean, basically, if you have socialism, that implies that there are still disputes that need to be worked out, because that's what socialism is for, with the unions and whatnot, and everyone having a say in how the company they work for is run. However, the people who like to draw this line from this experiment to the failure of socialism are people who don't understand socialism uh, whatsoever. Don't know anything about it. They clearly don't understand what socialism is. Because you see, ultimately, here are the reasons why Universe 25 wasn't socialist. Reason number one, and this is a big one, they're fucking mice. Reason number two, there was no labor. In fact, the experiment itself removed the necessity for mouse labor. Mice would no longer have to go out of their burrows to forage and hunt. Instead, they would just live in the facility itself where all of their needs were taken care of. They're, in socialism, people still have jobs. Even in fake fascist socialism, like the Soviet Union, uh, where being unemployed was actually illegal, you were required to have a job. In fairness, the state would give you one if you needed one. But like I said, it's not really important. This is just the facts. Mice don't have jobs. Therefore, mice can't really be socialist. And in this scenario, you have robbed them of the ability to have jobs, which means... It's not a socialist utopia, I'm sorry. You see, the thing is, is they didn't really create a socialist utopia. They created a prison. You see, this facility operates like a prison if prisons gave you all the food and water you wanted. Now, to be fair, also, no one was taking cold, uh, no one was taking fire hoses and, and washing these mice off in a concrete room with no dignity. And there was no a mouse solitary confinement. But for all intents and purposes, this is really a prison, just a 
co-ed mouse prison because it had win it had it had boy mice and girl mice that sounds weird mice don't have genders it had female and male mice Woman and man mice also zero sense. Man refers to our species. Just some things to think about if you were going to use terms like boy or girl mice or man or woman mice. Not not a, not how that works. I mean, technically they can't say anything, so you can call a mouse whatever you want. So I guess you could make that argument. I'm getting sidetracked. So ultimately, this has nothing to do with socialism and nothing to do with a utopia. And no one claimed that socialism would be a utopia. Socialism still assumes that there will be material problems to be solved because socialism is about solving material problems. Which is also why postmodern Marxism is a made up bullshit term. I'm not saying there were never people who called themselves postmodern Marxists, but real Marxists don't understand those people and think those people are crazy because you can't really have marxism without a mater without materialism which is 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 modernist as fuck but i'm getting sidetracked what other myths came out of universe 25 well if you are a right-wing religious type person who might be using universe 25 to try and illustrate some points you might bring up the quote unquote air quotes feminization of the mice. Ouch. Wow. What? That's that's dumb as hell. Lo allow me to elaborate. For starters, we have to explain why. These disingenuous bad faith actors, no pun intended because they're probably religious, would do this to the story. You see, it works like this. One of some of the complications of the breakdown in the mouse society were some of the behaviors that started to happen amongst young male mice. There was a group of mice called the beautiful ones. These were mice who sequestered themselves in an area normally used for pregnant mice, where they all they did was eat and groom themselves. Because they groomed themselves so often, their fur became shinier and softer than the other mice. And many people refer to this as the mice being feminized. However, this has to be stressed. Mouse rodent grooming is exceptionally normal behavior for rodents and if your entire body was covered in hair you would probably groom all the time too grooming is also a big part of rodent bonding and rodents grooming themselves is neither a masculine or feminine trait we're just associating the behavior of these mice with humans we're anthropomorphizing their behaviors even though their behaviors are extensions of normal behavior for mice. Now, it's not normal that they would sequester themselves and solely clean and eat, but it's also not an extension of some type of human emotion or response. It's an extension of a mouse-based response. It has nothing to do with their quote-unquote masculinity because mice have no conception of masculinity at least not as far as we know or can tell. The other reason that feminization of the mice is often thrown out there is because of the, well, brace yourself, trigger warning for this, uh, all the mouse rape gangs. You see, as the society started to decline, young male mice would start to form gangs that would go out and sexually assault other mice now part of this now part of this has been pointed to by the same right-wing actors that i've mentioned that this means that they were feminized because a lot of the rapes were homosexual however it's worth noting that the rape gangs actually sexually assaulted any mice male or female that could be isolated from the group and couldn't defend themselves. These gangs would also sometimes engage in cannibalism, eating their victims. 
which is not gay. Trust me, I don't know a single gay cannibal. Oh, wait, Jeffrey Dahmer. He was an exception. Name, name two gay cannibals. See? See? You only know the name of one. One real one? Hannibal Lecter's fictional. But let's move along. So those are two basic myths that came out of Universe 25. Now, I have now explained those very minor myths that came out of this that are often pointed to as an example of how our society is doomed to collapse. Now, to be fair, these things were symptoms of the mouse's societal collapse, not the cause. So what, what was the cause? Now, there are actually a lot of theories because, of course, we can't talk to mice. That's just not a thing. Can't do it. No mice talking. Despite what Disney has told you, they cannot talk to us. They're all, their brains, very simple compared to human brains. However, there are, like I said, a couple of different theories on why and how the society collapsed. One of these is the concept of overpopulation. Now, the thing about that is, is that despite the fact that the facility held up to 2,200 at its peak, it was intended to hold exceptionally more. In fact, they were surprised by the sudden societal collapse. The fact that the population peaked at that number when in their minds, to be fair, this was scientific estimation, there should have been room for more mice. Now, part of the problem, of course, for this might have been the way things turned out. You see, the main feeding and drinking area turned into the most popular place for mice to live. Meaning that even though there was plenty of room in the facility outside of this area, most mice, with the exceptions of, with some exceptions of, say, the beautiful ones, as they were called, would stay in this room because it's where the food and the water were. There was no reason to leave. So even though there would have been room for these mice if they had chosen to go and live anywhere else, this area itself became greatly overpopulated. And in that chaos of overpopulation, some things started happening. One of which was female mice just started avoiding pregnancy. Stopped getting pregnant. Stopped wanting to be pregnant. We assume this was some type of response to what felt like an incredibly crowded environment to them. Who knows? Maybe... Maybe we could draw a line from this to American society in the fact, or global society, in the fact that people are just having less kids. Whether it be voluntary or involuntary, hard to say. But the world's population of child replacement has greatly diminished. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So overpopulation is one of the theories on what happened to universe 25 now it has to be noted that a lot of the science that goes into this to this experiment is questionable in the fact that there is a lot of anthropomorphizing going on in all of these conclusions so another theory on why mouse society broke down was the death of meaning the inherent loss of meaning to the mouse society. Now, to be fair, that's almost impossible for us to measure. But what we can tell you is this. Stant mice, being simple creatures, are going to get all of their sense of meaning from one of two places. And the first one of these is the will to survive. The second of these is just natural mouse family hierarchy which begins, you see, the problem is, is that overpopulation is devastating to any type of hierarchy-based system. You see, because there are logically only enough jobs in a hierarchy 
to maintain that sense of meaning and power. Once you your population exceeds the roles that need to be filled by a hierarchy, then your society is going to have lots of people who have lost any sense of meaning. And mice, being simple creatures, aren't going to immediately jump onto how to create their own meaning or to find meaning in everyday life. Two things that are almost essential for humans to not lose their fucking mind in this post-capitalist, I'm sorry, late-stage capitalist society. This is pointed to as the reason why mice started to have the strange behaviors like the rape gangs and the and the cleaning of themselves. Now that's an interesting one to me, almost an alarming one, because like the mice, we today do seem to have a lot of disenfranchised male youth who just seem fucking lost. They're just wandering the internet with no sense of meaning latching on to the first grifters that happen to offer them even a glimpse, even a hint of meaning. I'm looking at you, Andrew Tate and Jordan Peterson and a cavalcade of less relevant masculinity people because people want meaning. Now, something that is often left out of the story is that Universe 25 is not the end of the experiments. It is merely the most famous version of when it was tested. Other experiments with the mice would sometimes lead to better outcomes. Well, what caused the better outcomes, you might say? Well, the answer is giving mice other things to do besides eat and sleep, various activities and what the articles I read described as creative endeavors, which I don't know what the fuck that means for mice. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. Like what like maybe it was a bad article. I don't I I don't know. Like I don't I don't know what that what that means. That it is worth noting that that is something that helps humans with their sense of meaninglessness is creative endeavors. Uh just so if you're feeling that way, maybe look into a creative endeavor or a hobby. These things, they help. I would say, I'm sorry, I'm not here to give mental health advice. Moving along. The point is, is that when mice were given other things to do, it seemed to improve the outcomes of that population. Now, whether that is because it aligns with option A or option B of why it collapsed, you could probably make arguments for both. Whether it was the fact that these activities encouraged mice to have reasons to go to other parts of the compound than just in the feeding and drinking room, or if it was because it alleviated the mice's sense of meaninglessness and gave them some type of purpose to hold their society together. Better results were found. That being said, I don't think you should take Universe 25 overly serious because ultimately there are some pretty substantial mental and instinctual differences between, well, us and mice. Even the experimenters who did these things had a habit of anthropomorphizing the mice. The reality is, is that human beings are much more variable than mice, with often able to come up with tons of meaning out of nowhere. And human hierarchies are significantly more complicated. And also, in fairness, hierarchy is, hierarchy is like a cheat code to meaning. It's, it's just doing whatever your dad says. It's not... It's not real deep, y'all. Also, the only natural hierarchy is the family. All other forms of hierarchy are bullshit we made up to try and make things function. Just, just saying. Just saying. <clears throat> so what should we take away from Universe 25? I, in all honesty, I don't know. If, I don't know. 
it seems like there might be a connection uh, between population implosion and overcrowding. And it's, or it could be this whole death of meaning thing. The answer is we can't really know because they're fucking mice. I'm going with mice. Like I said, the picture looks like mice. If you haven't heard of this experiment, I do encourage you to look into it more because this is this is just a very brief overview of this of this thing. You know? You know, this is this is almost a mini essay. I will say he looks like a guy who would do experiments with mice, you know? Oh, here's one other before I go, here's one other fun fact. Uh this experiment was done by NIM. And by NIM, I mean the National Institute of Mental Health. Now, if that sounds familiar to people um, from who had their childhood in the 80s and 90s, um, it's because the secret of NIM is loosely based on this. The experiments with mice and rats at, the, at NIM is what inspired that movie. So, so there's a fun fact for you to, to top this off. Uh, I don't know if you learned anything from this. There are better videos and essays out there about this than mine. It's just something I wanted to talk about, you know. Well, anyways, thank you for thank you for tuning in. Please follow on Spotify or like and subscribe on YouTube. Plus, uh, this podcast is available pr- through a lot of places where podcasts can be found. Not not just Spotify and YouTube. Although, those are apparently the big ones, and I encourage you to support me on them. Please. Please support me. No. Uh, Anyways. Thank you for tuning in. Have Have a wonderful whatever, whenever, wherever you are.